The following is a presentation of the Eagles Sports Network. Welcome into week two of the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman falls on the road to the East Tennessee State Buccaneers, 42 to nothing. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, uh, 42 to nothing, I think initial gut reaction to the score. Uh, obviously some, some disappointment, but if you go deeper, uh, some good. Uh, some good in that game, playing up a division uh, against an FCS uh, opponent, especially defensively. What did you see from your team that you liked on a day where uh, faced a good, good touch of adversity, uh, thanks in part to some uncontrolled electricity? Yes, sir. Um, you know, I think the biggest thing defensively, I thought our guys, you know, played with great effort. I thought. They show a lot of maturity, you know, because we put them in some tough situations and they just continued to go out and, and work to respond. You know, we had a couple of little lulls in there with them, you know, to where we gave up a couple of pass plays. But, you know, I felt like for the most part, I don't know what they finished with total, like, rushing yardage. They had a long run with the quarterback that was stacked on that. But I thought for the most part, we did a pretty good job of stop, get, stopping the run. Um, so a lot of things there to, to be encouraged and grow on. Uh, 330 yard, or 350 y yards of offense, I should say, for ETSU. Uh, split pretty evenly, run to pass, uh, but a, a respectable 4.3 yards uh, per rush allowed. Playing up a division, you're right, probably a number that uh, you're willing to, to accept and take against a, a school that ha had some uh, – at least for what Carson Newman is used to facing, uncommon size. They did. I mean, they were they, they were a big football team, and that's the biggest one of the biggest differences you'll see when you go up those levels. And then other things. I mean, they they ran really well too. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought Baron May, their quarterback, uh, did a nice job on the ground and gave you some uh, some moments here and there, uh, posing a tough problem to contain. But outside of that. Uh, your team bottled up the ground game fairly well. Yep, I felt like they did. And, you know, like I said, you got the explosive run from the quarterback. That that was a good play and a good call on them because we were we were taking some chances, mm -hmm. and then they finally came back and made us pay for that. But overall, I felt like our guys, you know, gave us a great effort on defense. Uh, I had to uh, not only battle ETSU and ETSU also faced this as well. Uh, game was scheduled to start at 5:30. Uh, players got pulled off the field during warm-ups, about you know, 4.40 or so, and sat until kickoff at 8.45. All told, roughly four hours of, of downtime that, that you weren't expecting. Uh, how proud are you of your team from, uh, you talked about giving great effort defensively, managing to still give great effort after a lot of thumb twiddling for some time? You know, I think... When you go on the road recruiting, the thing that you're looking for is like, you know, we want to find guys that love football. And I think that's one thing we learned about this team, you know, on the field and in that pregame moment was they were on the edge all four hours. Like, you know, they were ready to go. You know, they, want, they wanted to play football and, and they never wavered. They stayed focused, you know, even though they, they, um, they had me a little bit anxious at points in time. So I'm like, guys, relax, you know, but, um, you know, they, 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 they did a really good job of staying encouraging and, and really doing it for one another. You get, I, I, that was one of the proudest moments I've had as a coach was watching them interact with each other, you know, as we deal with delay after delay after delay. And it got to the point to where it's like anything outside of 30 minutes was like, let's go play ball. And then all of a sudden, you know, you kind of go back and get that reset. But I thought they did a good job of handling that. I haven't been involved in too many lightning delays uh, through the years. Mercifully, thankfully, but at one point, uh, I think ETSU's uh, SID, Kevin Brown, popped in the booth and said, well, there's been 374 strikes within 10 miles in the last 10 minutes. Uh, we're going to be waiting this one out a little bit. But uh, it, 
it did seem as if uh, Carson Newman and ETSU, to their credit as well, uh, given the circumstances, uh, it was about as good as you could have asked for. You know, I thought both teams probably looked resilient when they when they got on the field for warm ups, and then when we started play. I mean, we were really close to that game being canceled. Yeah, uh, genuinely, one more strike, yeah, and, and it was yeah. done. And it was done. Well, Carson Newman falls on the road to ETSU, forty-two to nothing. We start breaking down at the first half, and we get back after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show. Sure, we've been around a while, 171 years to be exact. We know the power of a liberal arts-based Christian education and the tremendous potential of what can be found on this campus, within this community. We are adventurers, dreamers, believers, passionate and compassionate, curious and clever, driven by a common purpose towards a common goal. I found my passion. I found purpose. We are Carson Newman. What will you find? Back on the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Newman falls on the road to East Tennessee State, 42 to nothing, playing up a level against an FCS opponent and squaring off with the Buccaneers for the first time in 49 years. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. Uh, Mike, we touched on it before the break. The defense, certainly good, accounted for itself well. Uh, but in the 42 nothing game, obviously some things went wrong. Uh, you start with special teams. Uh, punt returns, uh, punt return defense had its struggles. Uh, punt block had its struggles. What did you see uh, that is cause for concern from those two, two units? You know, I think that's the thing that happens. That's what we talk about. You look at the score and you say, well, like, those guys got to be nuts. They gave up 42 points, yep. you know, in, in that football game. But the problem that you run into is everything shows up on that side of the board. You know, whenever you don't play well on special teams, it shows up on that side of the board. If you give up turnovers and give people short fields, it shows up on that side of the board. And that was kind of what happened. I mean, we, we, we were kind of a disaster on special teams. Uh, we got a punt blocked in the end zone, which resulted in a touchdown. We had another punt that we, that we I don't know how we got off, but we were able to get it off. And then we um, had a punt return that we let them return down close. We actually had two of those, you know, and so you start getting into, you know, those things and giving a good football team just a little bit of a little, little ways to go and, and you're going to have a hard time. Uh, the first half was an interesting half of football. At one point I looked down through the drive summaries and uh, the teams were a combined, I think, 13 possessions deep in the game and nobody had possessed it for more than five plays. Uh, Part of that was ETSU scoring on a couple short fields. Uh, the aforementioned Inaj Carter had two long punt returns, one down to the 19, four plays later, touchdown. Uh, one, thought you had flipped fields. He returns it out to midfield, 51-yard drive later. ETSU punches it in. ETSU's average drive start was their own 48 compared to Carson Newman's own 19. Uh, that is a tough hill to overcome against an upper division opponent. Yep, and that's what we always talk about, the games within a game, and like the field position game. Real estate is is probably one of the biggest proponents. Um, and so that's that, that's something that we've definitely got to get cleaned up this week. Carson Newman trailed it at the halftime break, 21 to nothing to ETSU, and here are those first half highlights. No score between Carson Newman and ETSU. And off goes straight ahead of Herbie, and he is smashed in the backfield. Corey Clemson storms through. Jake Cottle storms through. Ja'Cory Long is there. And Irby loses two yards. Back to the 42. One to the short side right. May back to pass. Pressured. Steps up. He's hit. He's dropped. Kendall Williams got him from the backside. Up. Two for seven through the air for 12 yards to start for Whitson. On third and ten, he's back to pass again. Hits Ferguson on a screen. Ferguson has first down yardage over the right hashes. Gets up across the 30 before he's wrapped up by Chris Hope. Zane Whitson is in the gun here. Bringing Cobbs in motion, and they'll toss sweep to him left side. Cobbs spinning around, has first down yardage. Up across the 30-yard line where he's spun out of bounds along the left sideline by Javon Henderson. Third down and... 11 to go. Maine out of the gun. Steps up in the pocket. He's hit. Christian Hicks has him in his grasp. And Hicks wrestles him to the turf. A sack for Carson Newman defensively. 
back to the 27-yard line. A loss of four on the play, and the Eagle defense stands tall with a three and out. If it's not man covers, take the quick shot and, and break one tackle, and you got a touchdown. Second and two, handoff goes Sullins, slaloming his way forward. Now he's into the second level. Sullins across the 20 and 25, and he's bashed down along the right hashes up at the 28-yard line. Martin, the fullback, Irby Dotson. The give is to the fullback, Martin, and he is yanked down in the, the backfield. Lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Eagles read it perfectly. May from the gun, blitzed immediately, ducks and run. May fumbles it, ball loose. Major Williams was there, did he recover it? Jet Jones dislodged it, Major Williams has it. Eagles get the sudden change and stonewall the Bucks at the goal line. All right, those are the first half highlights as Carson Newman trailed ETSU at the halftime break 21 uh, to nothing. Mike Clowney had some moments offensively, kind of fits and starts in places. Again, uh, you're not going to face that size. Uh, you're not going to face that speed across the board, uh, one would presume, the rest of this season. Uh, what did you see that you did appreciate? from your offense? You know, offensively, when we first turned on the film, we knew that, you know, we, we probably have a hard time moving them. They're pretty good up front defensively. And so the biggest thing we try to do is work on trying to be able to get that ball on the perimeter and, and see if we can make a couple plays in the passing game. You know, we, we, throw, we played throw and catch a little bit on some hitches. And the other part of it, we felt like we were going to have to beat them deep, you know, on a couple of routes. And we had those guys open but, but couldn't connect. And then we had, you know, two plays that we had a chance to really get out of there on them, and you know, we got run down. I and mean, we just got. I, I thought for the most part, um, you know, the guys kind of stayed in tune to the game. I thought, you know, we did a great job of communicating, working to execute a couple things. You know, I think just that game's good for us, just from a standpoint of seeing that type of speed. You know, there's some things that you talk to kids and you coach kids about, you know, running back, for example. You know, I always say when I coach running back, you see a hole, hit a hole. You know, don't stand there and study it. And if, if you did in this game, you know, it closed up real quick. And so we'll be able to see some of that on film. Definitely felt like there were some moments uh, from Cam Ferguson and Jaden Sullins. Those two continue uh, their development. Again, not crazy numbers on the ground, um, but definitely moments where they, they showed up and belonged on that field. Yep, I th and I think our kids will be able to see that. But, you know, the big thing is going in and figuring out the things that we need to correct, you know, still being relatively young you know, in what we're doing offensively. You know, I thought our kids, you know, gave us a great effort. Uh, quarterback position was, was something that you had to work through. Uh, Zane Whitson had been questionable throughout the week. You didn't have Trey Luttrell. Uh, Jalen Myers got a ton of run. You got to see a little bit of Walker Martinez. Uh, uh, just how uh, tough of waters was that to navigate with the injuries, the implications surrounding the game being um, a non-countable game, I guess, toward playoff uh, perspectives uh, and managing all of those uh, interconnected and in tune variables. You know, it's it's one of those things that you know you want to have a quarterback and be settled. You know, I think that gives you a better chance of going into that game and, and really realistically competing is having a guy that you've got developed there. But the good thing about what you talked about, like that game, you know, not necessarily being a counter. You know, the thing it still allows you to do is to, to do a little bit more gambling and get some guys in to kind of get a feel for where they are and what they can do. Jalen Myers, uh, uh, about two and a half quarters where, where he was the guy, ran the option well, it seemed like, when, when, when he was under center. Jalen, I mean, he's played a lot of football. You know, that's the biggest difference, I'd say, between him and any other guys in the room. He's been a three or four year starter in college football games. So you could just see him being comfortable with the game. He didn't panic at all. Um, he's he's run option stuff before. So I think that stuff like really became natural to him. You know, I thought he, he and at times, he, I thought he threw the ball pretty good. Carson Newman falls on the road to ETSU 42 to nothing. We break down the second half after these messages on the Mike Clowney Show.
Back of the Mike Clowney Show as Carson Inman drops a game against an FCS opponent to ETSU. I'm Adam Cavalier, the voice of the Eagles, alongside Carson Inman head football coach Mike Clowney. Mike, a second half where uh, the difference in scholarships, uh, I thought, started to to show it, its head a little bit. Uh, ETSU with 29 more than what Carson Inman has at its disposal. And uh, when George Quarles brought in his backups, those are more or less full scholarship players. Uh, when Carson Newman brought in its backups, uh, not so much the case with full scholarships. Depth uh, kind of w w was a thing uh, late in, the, in that game. Fair? That's fair. You know, I think the big thing for us, I mean, it's just like seeing, seeing the positive in everything. We had some guys that, you know, didn't play as much as we wanted them to in the first game. You know, for, unfortunately, you know, they did to get to play a little bit in, in this game. You know, we probably had two guys in there that probably – we had like a couple guys with COVID and stuff like that, you know, before the first game. They probably would have played or started. And so be able to get them on the field and get them a couple reps to where we can kind of see where they're at, you know, in, in a game like that and, and, and continue to grow and develop that game experience. You know, I think it's something that will pay off for us down the line. Uh, kind of hard to judge. Uh, performances these first two weeks between VUL and ETSU playing uh, down a level to the NCC AA and playing up a level to FCS but defensively uh, Jake Cottle Christian Hicks uh, at linebacker linebacker position that was largely unsettled uh, didn't have a lot coming back from last year in the way of starts Cottle the only guy on the roster who had started uh, but Jake Cottle has been all over the place in the backfield, multiple tackles for loss, game Christian Hicks as well. What have you seen from those two guys so quickly uh, inserting themselves into the forefront at that, those positions? You know, the, the thing you like about those two kids are they've been in the program and, you know, they've kind of worked, they kind of conformed to, to do what we, what we needed them to do. You know, neither, neither one of them had that immediate success in playing time here. But what they've done was just kind of stay out there day after day after day. Um, you know, they I, you see the love and passion for the program in them. Um, man, Christian Hicks has is, is, is grown a ton. You know, wasn't eligible because of the transfer um, situation last year. But just to watch his growth has been fun. And Jake, you know, guy that's been here for a little while to to get this opportunity and work his work work his tail off to make the most of it. Yeah, I'm encouraged by both of those guys. Uh, defensively, first half didn't really give up any sustained drives. We kind of touched on that. Second half, ETSU started to move the ball down the field. Was it just being weathered at that point? I think that's some of it. You know, it just kind of when you could get discouraged, and I thought our guys did a good job of, of working and fighting their way through that. You know, I thought they made a couple calls to kind of, you know, convert a couple times to kind of keep drives alive, you know, which which was, you know, something that they didn't do earlier in the game. They kind of made a couple little change-up calls, which is, you know, good coaching from them and caught us off guard. And I think, you know, we've a couple times got them on the ground. But um, but when you're playing bigger people, like, you can't leave those guys on the field as long as we did. Uh, week one to week two, still some, especially defensively, some tenants there more often than not you did get off the field on third down uh turnover still there still uh, generated uh things like that and didn't lose the time of possession battle lost it but not by by much uh how proud are you that there was that carryover in those areas week one to week two you know that's where you we always talk about getting better between week one and week two and i thought you know you, Defensively, I think you can kind of see some of that as noticeable. It's a little bit harder to notice on the offensive side of the ball, um, but we'll, we'll we'll know more about that as we just kind of continue to to dig into it, you know. But the uh, the side that you know, I think we were a little bit concerned about, and our concerns proved to be true, was in the kicking game, in particular punting the football. Carson falls on the road to ETSU, 42 to nothing. Here are. Those second half highlights. See if ETSU comes after this one again. It's a fake. They snap it to the up back Christian Bass, and Bass picks it up over the left hashes. As a result, May out of the pistol. Sidecar right, 
Hand off Irby right side. Irby does not have a cutback lane, and he will not get away from Storm Livesey, Jake Cottle, and Jordan Wilson. They bash him down in the backfield back at the 15 for a loss of four. Against ETSU with 2.05 to play in the third quarter, Jalen Myers back to pass out of the gun. He throws out to the right side. That is complete to Jerron Newson. Newson slips his defender, makes one man miss across the 40, up near midfield before he's tackled from behind. Over the numbers right side at midfield. Longest play of the day for Carson Newman. Gobbles up 26 yards. Dorsey out of the gun, pressured up the middle. He has hit. Dorsey trying to escape, but he will not wiggle out of the grasp of Jake Cottle. All right, those are the second half highlights from Carson Newman's road loss at FCS opponent ETSU. Talent Talk, heads your way when we get back after this on the Mike Clowney Show. Trilight is proud to support Carson Newman Athletics. We salute the student athletes who are working hard to make great things happen on the field, in the classroom, and in the world. It takes vision, commitment, and teamwork, qualities we share at Trilight. Our mission is to provide life-changing opportunities by building a world-class fiber broadband network. If you'd like to learn more, please visit trilight.net or call us at 833-847-0824. All right, back on the Mike Clowney Show. We wrap things up as usual in our final segment with Talent Talk. And this week, walking the field with Andrew Rogers, it's Cade Meeks. Andrew Rogers here with Cade Meeks on the Eagle Sports Network for another episode of Talent Talk. Curtis to his left. Fake the counter, throw it, right sideline, jump ball, it's caught. Did he get his feet down? Yes, he did! Touchdown, Carson Newman! Cade Meeks sees it along the right side of the end zone. He's got his first career touchdown grab, and it puts the Eagles up two scores. 20-7 to seven with 6.59 to play in the fourth quarter. 23 yards to Cade Meeks. Cade, let's get walking here. Uh, Last year as a freshman, it seemed like as the year grew on, uh, the more you contributed. First career touchdown late in the season, they made a lot of meaningful catches. What was it about the, as the year progressed that you got better and had gradual growth? Um, I mean, I just, I was just really waiting for my opportunity. I mean, um, everybody's got to play their part, but uh, I mean, I finally got the, got a ball like in the end zone where, um, it was a good. It was a good ball thrown in the corner, and I just had to make mo uh, most of the opportunity. My coach always calls it opportunistic plays because um, wide receivers like sometimes you don't get many uh, chances to make plays like that. Um, but when you do, you got you got to make the best of them. You can't fail at them. So you talk about opportunity. Braxton Westfield was here last year and had a lot of those opportunities, but he's no longer here. What did you pick up on? from him, an All-American caliber player uh, that you want to incorporate into your game uh, now that he's gone and you've learned from him? Uh, yeah, I mean, a lot of people can learn a lot from Braxton Westfield. He was a heck of a player. Um, but as uh, now, now that he's gone, I mean, I, I want to take what he taught me. Just like I learned a lot from how he runs deep balls. He's really good at fighting hands. So I learned a lot in that sense. And now he's gone, there has to be other receivers to step up. And I want to be one of those guys that we can look towards. Um, I know we have a lot of other receivers too, though, that we can look towards. We have a really good receiving core. Um, but when he, when he left, I mean, I, I felt like I kind of had a chip on my shoulder. I wanted to uh, be a guy that we can trust, that we can throw the ball to. So, Luttrell, eight on the play clock, takes the snap. Three-step drop, settles, throws. Meeks has him in stride at the 20. Meeks racing over the numbers to the house. Touchdown, Carson Newman. Trey Luttrell, a frozen route to Cade Meeks over the left side numbers. Let's change it up here. Favorite car? My favorite car? My dream car? Dream like, car. Uh, definitely like a Ford Shelby Mustang. Um, like the newer models, not the older models. I like those two, but like a 2022, 2023 Shelby Mustang, lime green or probably dark blue with black racing stripes. There's so many good receivers in the National Football League. Is there one that you like to watch or you like to try to uh, replicate your game after? To be honest with you, I don't watch a whole lot of football, but if I had to choose one, um, it would be Adam Thielen. 
That's one of my favorite receivers to watch. I mean, I think we have a very similar build. He's 6'2". He's like, he's a little bit like bigger in size, but 6'2", 205, 200. But I think me and him run routes a lot very similar. So that's who I look towards. If you could have one more of the other, would you rather have more physical strength or more mental strength? I don't know. That's, 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 a, that's a, I like both. I mean, Did mental strength, I think mental strength would probably be the, the best to choose. I, I mean, if you, if you don't have a good mentality, you can be the strongest in the room. If you don't have a good mentality, you're not going to do good. You'll fail under pressure. So I would say mentality for sure. As we go down the final 20 yards here, let's flip back over to football uh, this season. How do you hope your game progresses? Uh, there's obviously a progression from year one to year two, but how do you want your game to elevate from game one of year two to the final game of year two? Um, I mean, I just I, like I think anybody can say this. I mean, I I, I want to break records. I mean, I want to I want to have uh, really good stats. I mean, I just want to make really good plays. I want to um, be a guy that like people like when they see on the field that they they expect to make plays. You know, um, but I mean, I'm really tough on myself. Like I just feel like, uh, but I, I can say that's about anybody really. But. Um, yeah, just someone that people can look towards that can make plays that they can trust. For this offense and team in general to be successful, how will, how important will it be to find that balance between a quality running uh, game that has so many running backs in this offense, but then also the ability to throw it down the field uh, that we've seen you already do this year? I mean, I think that we are starting to throw the ball a little bit more and people are starting to see that, but I also know that with a really good run game, you can uh, – run the ball down people's throats, they'll start stacking the box. And then once they start stacking the box, you create one-on-one -on -one matchups and then you can throw it to your receivers. And I think we have the receivers that can make those plays for sure. So I think that we're gonna find a really good balance this year. Okay, thanks for the time. Best of luck the rest of your football career. Yep, thank you. That's Cade Meeks, I'm Andrew Rogers on this episode of Talent Talk. All right, thank you very much, Andrew Rogers, Mike Clowney, Cade Meeks, uh, another one of those guys. Fun watching his development uh, over the last uh, year. and. Uh, certainly has inserted himself becoming a major player in the receiving core for Carson Newman. You know, Kay's a guy that we're super excited about ha having on a football program. Transferred in here from Jacksonville, um, Chattanooga native. So all of our Chattanooga guys, like, we're the ones that kind of told, told us about Kay. But it's, it's been fun watching him. Same thing we talk about all our kids, just kind of grow and develop. You know, the thing I love about him is that, you know, he was a super competitive wrestler in high school. And as a wrestler myself, like you always, <laughs> you, you, you enjoy having those guys, because especially if those guys wrestle and they compete at a high level, at least that toughness you know will probably be there. And I think that's a really good characteristic of Kate. All right, we touched on this at the end of the show last week, uh, and we'll continue this week. Uh, boy, howdy. Uh, the the real portion of the season is here. Not that these past two weeks haven't been real, uh, but at the end of the day, VUL, ETSU, uh, they don't matter for the, the playoff picture. And you start out with a crack uh, at the, the this section of the schedule going to Limestone, a team that uh, I think if you talk to Mike Furry and, and the Saints, they would not expect to be 0-2. Uh, but that is the hand that Limestone has been dealt, a team that will no doubt be hungry uh, when you arrive for the first time ever at Saints Field, a new experience playing on-campus football uh, at Limestone, uh, and then with LR and Newberry looming after that. Three teams in a row that this season have either been ranked or receiving votes uh, in the three of the top four teams in the preseason poll. What do you have to do to, to process and learn from these two weeks against VUL and ETSU heading to uh, Limestone on Saturday. I think the first thing you have to do is you have to take some of the maturity that we talked about in this past game, you know, looking at the score and trying to dissect it and saying, you know, well, it may not have been as bad as, as it seemed. You know, the big thing that you have to do when you look at Limestone is like, don't look at the fact that they're 0-2. Yeah. I mean, they went and played a really good West Georgia team. And then they also just went and played a really good West Alabama football yeah. team. You know, and I, I went to sleep watching them last night, and it's, they've got a, a really good football team. Um, I think the votes they got it are, are warranted, you know, and, but the thing that we need to be able to do is be ready to go over there and compete and try to win football game. I think the impressive thing about the Saints uh, last year, this year, uh, unquestionably, has been the development 
of their defense. Uh, offensively, uh, they've had their fair share of adversity faced. Uh, Dustin Noller, their starting quarterback, went down with an injury uh, in week one. Uh, Grand Valley State transfer Indicott uh, threw for 260 yards on Saturday against West Alabama uh, in his stead. Offense has been there for the Saints. Defensively, they've tamped down both West Georgia uh, and West Alabama, something that was there in fits and starts last season. Yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's, that's super noticeable when you look at their scores. You know, the West Georgia game, I looked at just kind of the West Georgia highlights because they played at West Georgia. And you're like, wow, you know. But then you go look at the at the box line and you watch the video, like it, it was a really tight football game. And this one with West Alabama is, is pretty much the exact same thing, you know, with the backup quarterback. Mike Clowney, pleasure as always. We'll talk to you uh, next week after a trip to Gaffney. Looking forward to it. It's Carson Newman head football coach Mike Clowney. I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Mike Clowney Show. Thanks for watching.